Welcome back. Baltimore Positive and WNST.net. We are back in the Ville, the 21228. I'm reading the sign out here, Don. It says, uh, it says dine, chat, and chill in the Ville. We've got it all going on, Same right? Fair. We're Absolutely. dining, we're chatting, we're chilling, <laughs> and we're doing it with Dr. Daryl Williams, Baltimore County School superintendent, we uh, we'll always want to former uh, Redskin fan. For, and we're, <laughs> we gave him, we're giving him dispensation of that uh, today. Making but we special do, rules. We do, we do want to uh, thank our sponsors at Fadley's and and State Fair and our friends at Center Maryland and our brand new sponsor Jeff Moeller and Moeller and Gary Realtors. I know a little bit about them, so give Jeff a call four one zero seven four six one. Don't do it during the turn game. He's watching four the seven. Terms. Right, we're we're welcoming them aboard. Uh, again, segment two, Dr. Williams, welcome back. Thanks so much Thank again you. for being here. Talk a little bit about one of the – Nestor and I say we've gotten a master class over the first year of Baltimore Positive in leadership. Um, go back to your early career, if you will, and talk about outstanding leaders that you observed as a young teacher. Wow. Pieces that you took and – what you believe leadership is all about. And that's, that's a lot to unpack. Yeah, you read a lot of books. I'm sure you read a lot right. of books on leadership too, right? Yes. You, we all we, sort of model something, right? Yeah, but watching the, the true leaders in action is incredible. So thank you for that question. It took me back to Doc Le, Dr. Floretta McKenzie, Dukes, Floretta Dukes McKenzie, superintendent of D.C. Public Schools. Stoic lady, smart, um, no nonsense. Um, I can go through the list. Lynette Adams. Mike Durso, um, Paul Vance, Dr. Paul oh, Vance, yeah. Jerry Wiest. Um, and they're all very different. Now, these are inside names, I know, but, but I know some of them. They're all very different, They are right? all different. And Probably I think different like football coaches. Very different. <laughs> well, right? I mean, you could be successful coaching anyway, right? Well, I think their success was they knew their environment. So they knew the people. They knew the politics. Um, they invest in the people. So, so what I took from them is clear vision. You know, you got to have a clear vision, and people need to know your vision. For me, it's about are our kids being successful? If not, why not, and what are we going to do about it? Is there stellar teaching going on? Um, so I think about their vision was always clear, and they didn't always have to say, good morning, everyone, this is my vision, but th it was Im Im embedded in everything they did. Um, and the second most important part, I believe, is their people. They invest in the people. They knew how to work with just about anybody. Um, and not just, well, there is Mr. Dickerson, and he's a staff member, but there's Mr. Dickerson. He has two young kids, and he's dealing with a family member who may be ill. And so always checking in. That's the investment, investing in the people. Um, and all of them, I just think about all of them. Even when uh, I used to work in Montgomery County, I was amazed that Dr. Paul Vance knew who I was. Right. You know, I was a teacher. I was a little, little first-year teacher in the county. Um, so just those connections are, are very important. Um, and so... That's what I took away. You know, I enjoy working with people. I enjoy sitting down on the floor talking to kids. I enjoy just like the other, just uh, two hours ago, I was in Randallstown. They had an African-American history um, portrayal of music icons. And then the students who perform after it was over, I wanted to say, so tell me was your Snoop history. One of them or? I'm sorry to say <laughs> Snoop was not one of them. <laughs> But just to hear the student's story, tell me a bit, a little bit about your background. Where did you come from? What, what's your aspiration? How have we helped you uh, in terms of reaching your goals? So all of those leaders, I just found they invested in the people. They were smart. They studied. You know, they were always reading about current events, always a book about leadership. Um, we stay. Con and then you have your little support group. So that's what I've learned that. In these jobs, it, it can be lonely. You, can, you know, it, you, uh, people it, don't understand, it, do they? How lonely it, it can it, be. It's lonely, you know. So sometimes I'll call up my friends and say, "Okay, I'm dealing with this," and they're like, mm -hmm. "Doc, let me tell you what I'm dealing with." So we commiserate and then we share best practices. And I do believe in professional development, and that's why one of my budget areas I'm putting emphasis on uh, high-performing workforce 
and alignment of human capital. Um, as, as great as Baltimore County has been, I just need to elevate that more. We got to invest in our people and their skill set. Leaders, teachers, parents, you name it. Uh, bus drivers. We just got to invest in the people. So those are the skill set that uh, I, I, I learned from all those leaders throughout my career. Well, you talk about invest. Kerwin, here we are, right? I mean, sure. this is in the news. Talk about investing in our children. And uh, I live in Baltimore City. This whole thing was born out of how can we make the city better? And you may say, some may say, well, what's Baltimore County schools? Well, we're all in this together. I mean, Correct. We, you know, we have Anne Arundel County uh, Superintendent Stuart Pittman going to be joining us. Uh, Hartford County uh, 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 County Barry Executive Glassman. Barry Glassman is going to be with us in a couple weeks. We believe that it's bigger than the city. We believe the city is important and the election is important and all of that. But but when it comes to reading for you know first, second, third grade children at this point, this investment we're talking about children that aren't born yet that would benefit from Kerwin young. People now planning a family to say, where would my child be in Baltimore City in a school in 2028 or 2030 when my child is six, seven, eight, nine years sure. of age at that point? Shouldn't we be doing this for, for those people? Uh, you know, as uh, you know, I, I, I'm not going to benefit from crime. I'm not going back to school. I looks like I'm having no grandchildren. I don't live in Baltimore County, although I own a business. Uh, but for, for me, we need a better society. We need to make better little people. Correct. In, in order for my 70s and my 80s to be a better place, I need them running the place when they're in their 20s and 30s, and we're making them now. Correct. We need to Correct. make them better. And Kerwin, for me, everything I've heard about it, how do we pay for it? Okay, I, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm a, pragmatist, a pragmatist, but for, for you on the education, what would it mean for the superintendent of Baltimore County or Baltimore City or anyone in Maryland? So I think um, it means the bigger message is saying we have to invest in education. You know, we have to put that at the forefront because without education, we won't have these lawyers and doctors and firefighters. We won't have all these other professions. So it's really saying we have to make sure we invest. And so what I like about Kerwin, absolutely putting more emphasis on the younger ages, particularly we got to have our kids reading by uh, on grade level by grade three. But we got to back map that. We can't wait to right. second grade to do that. We got to look at the early learners. I was just at Campfield um, Early Learning Center where we have Head Start, <coughs> Pre K, Kindergarten. Oh my gosh, those kids were so much fun. They because they they want to learn. They want to. Uh, they like sponges. They want to soak up everything that they that we give them. So we got to invest in that. But the other part about Kerwin is making sure we're doing things for our older students. So our career and college ready component. We got students who are going to be in jobs that you and I never thought of because of just society, what's out there, the technology. And so we have to expose our older kids and opportunities and access to um, challenging courses, courses at the college level, internships, apprenticeships, all of that. So I, the tenets of Kerwin, I support 100 percent because it's really saying we have to make a statement. Education is important. And Kerwin is saying we got to look at our younger uh, learners as well as kids and opportunities as they matriculate through the higher grades and particularly when they leave and then we also have to focus on some of the our students who may need additional resources looking at kids who are receiving special ed services kids who are English language learners they may need additional time and that's okay because when you finish how you finish was probably different how I finished high school and how Don finished high school that's okay but now we as a society, we have to be open to that. And as a school district, we have to have opportunities for all students. Well, you know, it's, again, we're, we're sitting with Dr. Darrell Williams, Baltimore County School Superintendent. If you're listening out there in your car, we're talking education, one of Nestor's favorite topics. Doc, so many things in that last response to unpack. The one thing, I'll start at the end and then work my way back. Okay. I think people would be shocked. Um, I, I looked and jumped on to get some data about the school system, even though I'm fairly familiar with Baltimore County Public Schools. A number caught my eye again. 9,000 students today in your school system for whom English is not their primary language. Oh, 9,000 9, out of 115. Out of 115. So talk to us about the challenges 7%? of meeting those students wow. and their needs and 
what we do as a school system to address those young people? So during the budget process, I presented to the board a little bit of the context. And so I gave the history of how Baltimore County has changed over the last 20 years. And one of the data points was around our English language learners, that we have um, probably 166% increase since 1990, um, the number of, of students who are English language learners. Um, but we haven't staffed to support that need. So, of course, that was one of my budget requests to, to increase the number of ESOL, what we call ESOL teachers. Um, but that means we're having students who are coming in who speak little or no English. And that doesn't mean they're starting in first grade or kindergarten. They could be potentially starting in our middle school or high school. We have to prepare for that. We have to do things differently. And that means our curriculum has to be fluid enough. Our teachers have to have the skill set. And then we have to understand the learner that we're trying to teach. You know, so if I have a ninth grader who speaks little English, I have to be able to give him those skill set so he or she could be successful once they get our diploma. So it's a lot of looking at our, our, our written curriculum, looking at how we're teaching, making sure we have the human capital to support. And then another piece that we mentioned earlier, making sure we have that partnership with the home. You know, we can't do it by ourselves as a school district. We have to rely on the first educator, which is the parent. And how do we bring them in and make this a partnership? And so that's, a, that's one of our areas that we have to focus on as a district. How do we meet the needs of our English language learners? And how do we program for them so they will be successful once they finish and, high school? And, and, it, and it's not cheap. One of the other things that's not cheap and you alluded to, and it's such a key part of Kerwin, is the importance of early childhood. And yeah. two, two things come to my mind sort of to give context to this and then have you really unpack it for us. Number one, we had um, Senate President Bill Ferguson mm, on great. a while back. And the Senate President gave us a piece of data that really has stayed with me. And that was they measured Baltimore City students who had come through quality pre-K mm -hmm. and then measured them on a kindergarten readiness assessment. Mm -hmm. And going back to your old stomping grounds in Montgomery County, what they found out was that when students in Baltimore City came through quality pre-K, their scores on kindergarten assessment readiness tests were every bit as strong as those of Montgomery County mm -hmm. students. Again, meaning it, it excuse my grammar, it's an access it ain't issue. the kids. Yeah, it's, a, it's right? an access it's issue. It's not right? the kids. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The, the second piece was just this week, I saw a parent, and the person happened to be an educator, post on Facebook. And they had recently moved their children from one preschool to another. And this was an educator who, she was basically saying, you thought I would have picked up on this. Mm. But what she's noticed in one month is the vocabulary development, the comprehension skills for even three and four-year-olds is at a totally different level at this new setting than it was to the one previously in terms of the words, the Correct. understanding, referencing stories like Goldilocks and using mm -hmm. words like porridge. So mm -hmm. talk to us about your budget. Uh, we, we know it's, it's significant. I think it's one point, if I remember, 1.7 or 1.8 1. uh, billion dollar operating budget. That's B. Operate. With, a B. With, with a B. With yes. a B. With a B. Um, but talk That's about a big business. talk about early childhood in Baltimore County, what it is, what it should be, and where we need to take it. So and can you do that in less than five hours? <laughs> I mean, that's a complicated topic. It is a complicated topic. It's an important topic, to your point, that the mindset has to change now that um, we're expecting our kids to be able to acquire uh, um, academic language and vocabulary, development of vocabulary and sight words at an earlier age. And sometimes that's um, a disconnect because when, I'll just say myself, when I was coming through school, kindergarten was more play, half day, big blocks, right? big blocks right. 
But I remember the chocolate milk and the cookies. See, see, right, and, and, and the fifteen minute nap. Right. Um, now there's a component around the academics, and it's really the reading, learning to be able to identify the letters, write your letters, and if you think about it, we're all preparing to get to that third grade of being able to read on grade level. Because there's studies out there, if we can close gaps then, if we don't close gaps by third grade, they'll continue to widen and, and get bigger as kids matriculate through the grades. And so that's why the Kerwin Commission is saying, let's focus on early childhood. Let's look at pre-K. Let's look at Head Start. Um, our challenge for us is that um, to have the full day K, which means we have to have the the structure, the facilities to accommodate kids it's all day. It's a long day, day for a five-year-old. Right? It is. But it's also a challenge it for is. parents who have jobs, right? It, well, it's some parents. relief when they're in school sure. all day versus half day, particularly for our working parents. I mean, I, we all have been there. I've been there trying to manage daycare and, and kids' schedule and Everyone work schedule. Everyone that's ever had a five-year-old has yeah, had to deal with you that, right? you got to well, manage. But I think that's the important piece is really putting more of that emphasis on their early readers, looking at pre-K to three and what we can do to really build those skill sets. So, you know, looking at our curriculum, and it, it means we – our staff members have to be well trained and understand that it feels like we're pushing more rigor and, and academics and not some of those soft skills that you talked about earlier. But but we know now if you think about what kids have to face when they leave school when they leave high school, we have to start earlier. We have to really prepare them. Well, well, b building on that, again, a tough question. I think As let's assume for a moment that the legislature and the governor are able to, to get to some place where we have Kerwin, not a watered, watered down Kerwin, but a real Kerwin that makes a difference. And all of a sudden, local school systems are required to provide a much expanded pre-K program. What are the implications of that for you as a superintendent regarding capital planning? So, yeah, so it really means facilities. We have to make sure we have our facilities to be equipped to do that. It may mean temporarily we have to look at um, what we call learning cottages, um, alias portables. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Double alias trailers. trailers. <laughs> so let's go call but trailers. we'll stick with learning cottages today. When I saw them down at EBT and I'm a COVID, they were trailers. They're, they're, today they are learning cottages. cottages. Okay. There's probably some other different right. name um, out there, but... Um, we have to look at that. We have to make sure we have the resources to accommodate. Or there's also, as you described, there may be some private sectors or private um, facilities that we can partner with. You know, and, and looking at the commission, there's some options that we can explore. Um, but definitely, once they get into our building, we want to make sure we meet the needs. But it, it is going to be, you know, in Baltimore County, we're dealing with some facility issues, as you well know. Um, and I'm so pleased in working with our county executives that we are developing this multi-year capital improvement plan. Looks like the Built to Learn Act yes. has a good chance of passing, It has right? a good chance. So these are all positive to get us the facility should not be a reason why our kids are not learning. Um, I don't want folks to use that as an excuse. But, you know, some of our facilities really need some modernization, in some cases replacement. But getting back to the early childhood, we're going to have to prepare for a longer day for our students, and that facility is going to have to accommodate that. The new Dundalk Elementary. Have you been to Dundalk Elementary? No, but you I have to go I and see. Been since he's waiting for Colgate. He went to Colgate. No, went he's to Colgate. Looking, oh, oh, he's okay. looking for. Tell him about the new Dundalk L. Well, it is amazing. It's amazing what well, Colgate's going to be better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to put one against <laughs> right. the other. You love them both. Uh, right. I love them both. <laughs> but it's a little bit of the old, so they kept, like, the uh, front entrance. And they and when, as soon as you walk into Dundalk Elementary, you have this timeline to the left where you can go down memory lane. Just they have about that in high school, too. Just yeah. about. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I saw that. And so that's. And then the, the furniture, the classrooms don't look like what they used to. So the furniture are these pieces that you can break apart you can put together 
Um, you have high technology in every classroom. Um, the little kids have access to uh, manipulatives. I mean, it's just fascinating to see uh, what these new structures look like. They don't well, have to be. For 1941 they're anymore, not right? built that way anymore. Right. I mean, you can you can go high now. You don't have yeah. to go wide. You can go <laughs> high. You can do all kinds of things. I like to call it almost like the Starbucks. You know, you walk in. It's it says when you walk into Starbucks, you kind of feel good, right? It feels intimate. It feels like you really just want to sit down and enjoy your cup of coffee. These new school buildings are just amazing to see. I found colleges to be like that. When I went to community college, even 35 years ago, UB, Dundalk, there was a, it was a campus that high school and school never felt like a campus. Mm-hmm, it felt mm-hmm. like a place you went, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Especially if you were in a trailer, right, as a student, right? Or, right. or excuse me, a cottage. <laughs> so, so, exactly. So real quick before we jump to a break again, we are with Baltimore County uh, School Superintendent Dr. Darrell Williams talking all things education. Quick reminder, if you like Baltimore Positive, download it wherever you get your podcast. It's free. We're going BaltimorePositive.com. Doc, you talked about, you talked about the front end early childhood, and we're going to spend a lot of time in the next segment on what I call hot-button issues. One of the hot-button issues, it seems to me today, you can't pick up any journal or any discussion on education without talking about the role of career tech, voc training, the criticism that those of us who love education get that, look, you guys put all your eggs in one basket. Everybody Mm -hmm. had to go to college, Mm -hmm. and we can't find electricians or plumbers or carpenters. Tell us where you are and what you see as the responsibility of of a school system the size of Baltimore County to address that issue? So back in the 90s, to your point, that was a big push. Everything was college ready, college ready. Um, And then we realized, as I mentioned earlier, jobs are being created that we never even thought of. And then um, what we are deciding to do in Baltimore County, uh, we are going to make our kids career and college ready. Because the reality is our kids are gonna leave us and they may not go to college. They, they have to have the skill set to go in and get a job, whatever that may be. And so what we are looking at, when kids come into ninth grade, actually we're starting in middle school, we're using Naviance and we're talking about goal setting and career aspiration, just exploring, exploring at an early age. So what are you thinking about? What what's, what is your interest? Uh, have you visited a college? Have you stepped foot on a college campus? Have you talked to someone who may be working in that field? So we're doing things at the elementary school level. We have AVID in the majority of our middle schools and high schools, um, which is advancement via indeter- advancement via oh individual determination. Thank you. I know it is AVID. I wouldn't even have tried I'm, to put it I'm all I'm going to put it together because I just was at Newtown <laughs> High School and they there had a go. showcase of AVID. Wonderful opportunity. You grabbed it right Yeah, Yeah, here. I was like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. got it. I got it. High school must have the opportunities for our kids to explore. And to your point, we have, we're bringing back these opportunities for kids to get those skill set to be plumber, electrician. These are family um, supporting jobs. Medical yeah, I, I fields. Dundalk. My dad yeah. took me down to Southeast Vocational Tech and thought, you know, said, you want to go into drafting? Do you, you know, we, I always wanted to be a sports writer and that was part of where I was. But there were a lot of people, you know, in, 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 in East Baltimore at that time in my life that clearly had it been sheet metal work, just work with your hands, whatever that would be. That's what they did with their lives. And it, if it would have been more available. Than, I, I went to high school when they were closing down the shop classes and they were closing down the auto automotive classes and stuff right. like that. Yeah, and those are expensive programs to run. Sure. Absolutely. And what I love about the where we are now, the partnerships with our community college, I tell you, you know, I wish we had that when I was going in school. Students can actually have dual enrollment. In some cases, we could have students who finish high school with an associate's degree because of the the, the coursework. So with that partnership, we're giving more kids opportunity to explore, to get those skill sets. Um, Well, that's a fast track, right? That's a fast track, but also looking at our counselors and our career coordinators are looking at and having those conversations with students. Just tell me what you're interested in. Because sometimes it doesn't have to happen during the school day. It can happen after school. Those 
apprenticeships, as I mentioned earlier, the internships. How do we get more of our kids involved in that to really figure out what they want to do and to get those hands-on opportunities with professionals in the, in the, in the workplace? So, so I tell you, our CTE program, uh, Doug Handy and all the staff, our counselors. Career, Career and technical, technical education. education. It was, was it called DO when I was a kid? Diversified Just, occupations. Very similar. Yes. I, I, my senior oh, year, no. I did that at the paper. And that was part. Oh, yeah. And they liked that I did it at the paper because I wasn't doing it like a fast food place or something like that. Yeah. Be, because yeah. it was it was career minded, right? Yeah. And that, that's yeah. that's yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. 35 yeah. years later. We, we, have to, we have to educate our kids about career and college ready and say, but I will say this. I said to many of our seniors, there's a college out there for you. There's, there's a college out there for you. The piece that we have to help our families is paying for it and making sure, you know, because you see these sad stories. They get these scholarships. It's for the first year, maybe for two years, or they're not prepared to oh, take the rigor. Bernie Sanders is right. talking about it every night. Like, yeah. you know, so – College and how to pay for it. Yeah, that, that's that's a major topic. It's for a major topic. I mean, it's a gr- great place to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about data driven decision making. Something okay. I know is near and dear to your heart. I want to talk about equity. That's one of Nestor's favorite topics. He loves okay. the whole concept equality and of, equity of okay. equity. Again, thank our sponsors: Fadley, State Fair, Center Maryland, Jeff Moeller, and Moeller and Gary Realty. Nestor, where are we today? We're in the Ville, uh, and uh, I'm chilling in the Ville. I saw that on the sign. What did you? It's Bridge. filling up. What did you have to eat today? People, Shrimp and grits. People always oh like gosh. to get your Shrimp menu items. Love it. Well, I mean, I, I was going to go with the chicken and waffles. I've been in New York eating a lot of Asian food, and so I'm eating too much. And then I came in here and I saw the shrimp and grits, and I decided to eat too much one more time. So, so. it's it's filling <laughs> up. Diet. Nestor's That's full. <laughs> State over. Fair is filling up. We're I with Dr. Daryl Williams. We'll be right back. Nestor. WNST and Baltimore Positive uh, back for more here in uh, in Catonsville. Stay with us.